All right, let's learn some more Unity. So in our last lesson, we created a scene with a plane and two cubes. What if we wanted to make more cubes, a lot more cubes? Sure, we could select them and uh, paste them into our scene, but let's get a little, little bit fancy with creating cubes programmatically. So in order to do that, we need to create a C-sharp script and attach it to some object in our game. It doesn't really matter what. Because the cubes are going to be sitting on the plane, maybe it makes sense to add this C-sharp script to the plane. So I'm going to select a plane and then choose Add Component from the Inspector tab. This is going to be a new script. The language is C-sharp, and we're going to specify that the name of this is called Cube Maker because it's going to make cubes. We click the Create and Add button, and we can see that the Cube Maker script has been attached to the plane. Now, by double clicking on the Cube Maker, we can see that we see two functions start and update. Start is called when the game starts, and update is called for every frame. So, because we're going to want to configure our cube as the thing that we want to make from the inspector tab so we need to make this game object public and we're going to call this the thing to make now in our start function we can programmatically instantiate one of these new objects it takes three parameters the first one is what thing we're making uh, the second second one is a Vector 3, which will reflect the translation of where it's going to be placed, essentially. So we're going to say 0, 1, 0. And then we need to specify the rotation of this object. Uh, that is going to be Quaternine Identity. Sounds like a movie. All right. Now we save this, and if we tab back to Unity, we can see that thing to make has now been added as an attribute to the cube maker script. So what we can do is that we can drag the cube itself under thing to make. So now we have we have two cubes here. Uh, what we can do we can select both of them and we can move them underneath the scene. And now if we, so both of those cubes are below the floor. Remember that, right? But if we hit play, we'll see that we have programmatically spawned that one cube. And if you're paying attention, you would have noticed the other two cubes keep falling. That's fine. So now we've created one cube programmatically. What if we were to go into mono, mono again? And let's say we wanted to create 100 of these in nice 10 rows and 10 columns. In order to do that, let's create a for loop. And this is going to use a new variable, uh, the number made. We're going to start at 0. We're going to make 100 of these. And we're going to in increment the number that we've made as we go along. We're going to change the x, y, and z parameters to actual um, variables and we're going to start defining them. The y-axis, that's how far it goes up and down. That one's easy. Let's just lock that in at 1. For the x-axis, or the rows, we want this to count up 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So essentially we need to take the number made modulo 10. Pretty simple. For the z-axis we want to create columns so again we need to count from 0 to 10 but we need to do that more slowly and f so we can just take the number made divide by 10 and we want to take the float math f floor of that value now if we tab back to unity and we hit play we'll see that 100 are created but most of the cubes fall off. That's because we didn't specify an offset here. Uh, half of 9 is 4.5. So let's subtract 4.5 from the x and z axis. Now if we run the script again, oops, now if we run the script again, we'll see our 100 cubes line up pretty nicely on that floor. 
So these are, are just the right size. What if we wanted to make them a little bit smaller? We can change our original cube to have dimensions 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, make them a little bit smaller. So that way when we spawn uh, these cubes, wow, look how nice that looks, right? Um, you know, again, this is live, so we can grab some of the objects and we can move them around and they will, in fact, Well, this is that's just too much fun. Um, so, if we've noticed one thing that our cube is somewhat hard to differentiate from the rest of the scene, that's because we haven't created a new material yet. So, let's organize our assets folder. Let's create a folder for scripts. Let's drag our cube maker uh, to the scripts folder. Let's create uh, any another folder for our materials. Go into the materials folder. Let's create a material called reddish. Now let's pretend like we're not paying attention and let's give it an accidental wrong color. Let's choose a blue color. And now we can drag this reddish to the cube. Now the neat thing with materials is you can change properties such as the albedo to to anything and it'll, it'll change live in the scene and that's pretty nice. So now we have a nice reddish color. Uh, again, we can drag this object below the floor. We can click play and now we've got a nice, nice bunch of cubes there. All right, so that uh, concludes part two that you've learned to create materials, and you've learned to create your first C-sharp script, which programmatically instantiates objects.